Hey guys, so I wanted to do another vlog because I haven't vlogged in a little while and I wasn't really sure whether vlogging was for me. I mean like usually you would think if you knew me you'd be like yep she would love vlogging because I can talk for England and I love speaking to people but after I like opened up about my like mental health problems and struggles I kind of just felt like a bit weird about vlogging, like I don't know why, I just really was like I'm not doing it again. <laughs> I kind of just wanted to do a like get to know me vlog because I kind of think like a lot of people follow me on social media and they see like obviously I'm very open about my mental health struggles and then um, obviously you see like the whole like party girl like dressing up, loads of makeup but no one really like knows my personality and I think I've got like a really like I don't want to like blow my own trumpet here, but I think I've got quite a nice-ish personality, like I think I'm quite funny. Um, oh my god, I'm so hungry right now, like I don't know what's wrong with me, I can't stop eating. Also, I just want to let you guys know that like I haven't got a tripod for my camera, so my camera is currently propped up on a cat scratching post, a stool, and a protein shaker. Like, I wish I could show you, but I'm scared that it'll all come tumbling down. Um, also, do you like my uh, Primark men's t-shirt? I'm kind of going with this like grey vibe at the moment. Yeah. I'm trying to copy Miss Joslyn. Does anyone follow Miss Joslyn on Instagram? Because she's like so fit and like her style is like, oh, I wish, I, I genuinely do not have the, like some people are born with like style and they just know how to put things together. Like I spent hours trolling through Instagram like screenshotting pictures. Like in the olden days it used to be selfies and dogs. Now it's just people's outfits. But yeah, so I'm not blessed with style, but follow, check out Miss Joslyn on Instagram because like, she is a vibe, she is a vibe. So let's get to know me. I thought like we'd just cover some of the specifics. So I don't know the format exactly, so I'm just gonna go with it. So I'm 26 and if you don't follow me on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter, you won't know, but I hate being 26. I thought 25 was bad. I didn't realise how much worse 26 was. Like, in the grand scheme of things, it's not old. But when I got to 25, I had what I refer to as a quarter-life crisis. I don't know if anyone else has had one, but my God, it knocked me for six. The day I turned 25, I was in Bali, which was amazing. Bali was amazing. So that numbed it. That numbed the pain a little bit. I booked that holiday because I knew turning 25 probably would have some sort of effect on me, but I wasn't quite sure. The day I turned 25... I literally had like what I can just explain, like describe as like a, like a crash down to earth. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? And the whole of my 25, age 25, the whole year of being 25, I just had this like horrible thought at the back of my mind and it came out in whatever I did that like, what am I doing with my life? What have I achieved? Who am I? And oh my God, no one prepares you for how bad it is when you turn 25. Like, I am now 26 and it feels worse because people say to me, you're closer to 30 than 20. Thanks. Thanks. Like, I don't know what it is because age is just a number and you are as old as you feel, but I feel like there's so much pressure to have already sorted out like what I wanna do. Like, my God, I've been graduated from uni for like four years now and I still haven't done anything with my life. Not really. I still live at home with my parents, for God's sake. Like, I scrape by. Like, I'm financially okay, but I have not got enough to, like, own a property, which is really what I want to do. I haven't got this amazing career behind me where I go, yeah, this is, like, what I want to do now forever, and this will keep me, like, financially stable. And, and I think a lot of my, like, worries and stuff is, like, finances, because I see a lot of my friends, and they're, like, you know, they own their own houses, they've got like good careers and stuff and like I pursued a different type of career which obviously at, to this day I don't feel like has really paid off, not financially. And also like being 26 as well, I do feel like there's so much pressure like is it still acceptable to like go out every weekend? Because, like, should I not be, like, staying a little bit more now? Should I not be thinking about having kids, getting engaged, like, settling down? Should I not start, like, thinking about not maybe not going to Ibiza anymore? I don't know. I just get that impression. That's how, like, society is. And I don't feel like I'm alone. But I do feel like at 26, you do need to start thinking, like, 
realistically about where your life is going like you're not 21 anymore and you know I just feel like I just feel strange about like turning these this age and I'm 27 in March and I'm prepared for that to be like a fucking shit show because then I'd be like oh three years to 30 the thing is I just know like if I found a really great job and like you know like I felt like I was really fulfilling my life and like fulfilling myself and I was a bit more financially stable like maybe I wouldn't care so much so I'm sure there's people out there who are like 26 and they're like I don't give a fuck I can't wait to get older like I just want to be 21 again I feel like I've just taken so many wrong choices and made so many wrong moves and I just feel like I've got to this point at 26 where I look back and I go fuck what have I actually done but yeah, I just want to say, like, if you're watching this video and you don't like the way I'm speaking, like, please let me mean. This is just how I am and I'd rather be honest and, like, this is a vlog about me. And this is a get to know me and, like, get to know me should be pretty honest. Like, I'm not going to lie and be like, yeah, I'm 26 and I got it sussed and I love my life. Like, I literally have no fucking clue what I'm doing. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, fuck, another day. But yeah, but you know what? It's all good. I am originally from West Yorkshire. I lived in a little place called Eastburn. I don't know if anyone knows it, but it's between two towns called Keithley and Skipton, and the nearest cities would be Leeds or Bradford. That's why I've got a little bit of an accent. I moved um, down south when I was about... So I was 12. I was 12 when I moved, and it was quite a big, like, move. Like, I... I just started secondary school in Yorkshire and then when I moved down south I went back to middle school and then I did secondary school in year nine because it was like the, it, they were like phasing out the whole middle school system um but you know what like the move was really different obviously like there's quite it's a big difference moving from north to south um <clears throat> but yeah I mean like I've just taking it in my stride, all the milestones have happened here and I think like this is my life now like in down south. I'd like to move back up north and I'd like to move to like Manchester because I think Manchester's like where it's going on. And also talking about Manchester, I really want to be in Coronation Street. Um, I had an audition for Hollyoaks not long ago, I don't know if I can tell people but I'm going to say it because I didn't get it. But I had an audition for Hollyoaks. Oh and that's another thing, I want to be an actress. I'm just, I can't stop talking. Okay, let me just backtrack a bit. So I want to move to Manchester because Manchester's really cool, and like the coolest people are from Manchester. Georgia Bailey's, Ariana Agitar, um, oh my gosh, who else is from Manchester? Uh, I can't think, but I, li I like those two people. Um, so yeah, so I went to uni, um, and I graduated in 2014, and I came out with a degree in drama with creative writing, and I loved that, and it was really fun. And I still really haven't utilised my degree. I'd say, like, I took things from it that I've, like, used, like, life experience. But, like, educational purposes, I don't think I've really utilised, like, the actual piece of paper degree, if that makes sense. Um, so I've always done acting, like, my whole life. And I always really liked acting. After uni, I was like, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't know. I felt like uni really, like, was amazing. But at the same time, I really felt like I'd done drama my whole life and I hadn't made a thing out of it and I hadn't become successful and like I kind of left uni feeling really like deflated about like the future and I kind of just wanted to take like a hiatus from acting until last year when I decided like I wanted to get back into it basically um so I had a couple years away from acting did a little bit of tv stuff and yeah I like want to get back into acting so I've had like a few auditions and stuff but it's really hard to get like anywhere because there's so many people in the industry and so many people are really amazing with such a better like experience and kind of like CV and the auditions I've had like I haven't got and I had one for Hollyoaks which I was like dead set like I oh my gosh I was literally like this is like this is my dream like I really wanted Hollyoaks so bad I didn't get it and I was so gutted like so gutted but it's fine Fingers crossed, like, someone from Corrie sees this and they're like, yeah, we want her, because I can do, like, a proper northern accent if I need to. I think that's more Yorkshire, but I can put on Manchester if I need to. <laughs> I'm northern, I don't think I can do a northern accent anymore. Um, I kind of like this, like, light in. My eyes are, like, bare dry, though, from the sun shining in. So, yeah, so... 
I'm looking to do a bit more acting stuff. I'm trying to get representation, like a manager or something, but it's so hard. Like, I get people emailing me, like, asking if I want to come up for, like, interviews and stuff, and then I don't hear back, and they've contacted me. Or, like, I'll apply for things, and they'll be like, yeah, we're really interested, and then, like, I hear nothing. And I've had, like, interviews and auditions and stuff for, like, representation and managers and things, but it's all it all falls back onto the same thing, like, you don't have enough experience. But it's like a vicious circle. Like, I don't have enough what's called credits or experience to get on something like Spotlight, which is what a majority of talent agents or managers are looking for, or representation then like I struggle to get stuff because of my experience but then at the same time like they're not like giving me the opportunity to like prove myself like at least take me on on a temporary basis like put me forward and let me show you that I'm a really great actor anyway never mind something will come I have to believe it it will come so done a bit of tv stuff so I started doing like tv stuff when I was at uni and my first tv job was a dating show called Stand By Your Man, which aired on Channel 5, and I think it went on to, like, MTV, event, like, a few years later. But that, I, that was the first thing I did, and I really enjoyed that, and that was actually filmed in Manchester. And, um, and then after that, I kind of was like, yeah, I really want to do TV. And then when I was, um, I think, I, just after I graduated, I had an audition for A Beefy Weekender, and I eventually got it, and I did the first season of a be uh, the first ever season of A Beefy Weekender, and that was like 2016, 15 or 16. Um, I only got, did one season because didn't sleep with anyone, didn't fight with anyone, pretty much on the fence, or just a normal girl. But at the same time, it has like really helped propel me. Like, I'd say there's, been a few opportunities that have come out of it and I mean like for instance like, I was in Ibiza this year and some boy literally walked past me and was like you and Ibiza weekend and I was like I don't know <laughs> hi but like so stuff like that's like quite funny so that's tv um family life is I have um four brothers and a sister quite a big family I know um my parents were married before so I've got like three half-brothers and a half-sister. My dad's got two kids and my mum's got two kids. And then they came together and had me and my brother. And my brother is older than me, so I'm the baby, and he has got cerebral palsy and he's in a wheelchair. And growing up with that has been like really, really like, just very difficult, I'd say. Like, I don't know if anyone has a disabled parent or sibling but it's like really tough, especially when you're like really young and you don't like really understand. And then he went to a special boarding school when I was like young. So that had a really like bad effect on me as well. Like I really missed him and stuff. And then there's been things like people saying nasty comments about him. And I kind of grew up my life feeling really like ashamed of him and really embarrassed. Like, especially when he moved away to school and I kind of felt like I was the only child in the house. I grew like a resentment towards him that I'd say has been with me until basically about like six years ago, I'd say. Definitely like going to university and that's when I started seeing a counsellor. That's when I, if you watch my other videos, I started to see symptoms of depression and then it kind of spiralled into like a suicide attempt. And a lot of stuff that came up was a lot of like feelings about Harry. And I'd say until like I started seeing a counsellor, I found it really difficult to acknowledge that my brother had a disability. You know, like if my friends came over, I'd be really, really like conscious about Harry eating, all, us all eating around the table and stuff because Harry eats differently. And I'd be really worried about what my friends would say or think. And then like boyfriends or people that I brought around that I was dating, I'd be really embarrassed about them meeting Harry. And that was something that I like held throughout my life. Like from when he, when I was quite young and he went to boarding school, that's when I like really started to resent him. And I'd say that's when all the issues with like me and how I felt towards him, it came out. And I don't know, I just kind of grew like this resentment and it was almost like a, a wall to like protect myself because one of my kind of like earliest memories is being at school and a really nasty boy, this is like primary school, I'd say this could even be like year one, this really nasty boy said to me, um, oh my god, you look at your brother like in that wheelchair, oh my god, he's such a spastic, 
and like that has stayed with me like my whole life and I was so embarrassed and I was so upset and I was so ashamed I remember crying about it like it was the meanest thing like kids are horrible sometimes and that was so cruel and then yeah I just kind of like let that fester and never really address that and I kind of blamed Harry especially for like move the move because Harry was like the reason we moved down south because his special school was closer um and we lived too, so far away in Yorkshire and it was like killing my dad to like do the drive to keep picking him up and bringing him home and stuff like every few weekends um so yeah so like having a disabled sibling has its ups and downs obviously it's like really hard because I see a lot of stuff that makes me really sad like now me and Harry are older and we're closer and like obviously understand it and I accept him and I never feel like any resentment towards him like he's my brother and I love him and I accept him for who he is but like you know knowing that he can't do loads of stuff that I can like for instance I can just like get in my car and go somewhere and like don't need to tell anyone or I can just go out for a drink and like with my friends like with Harry it's like all got to be like meticulously planned like regimented like a military operation you've got to find like is there disabled loose is there access like where can he park the vehicle his disabled vehicle like is it too far is there someone to take him is there a carer if not can like my dad or my mum take him it's just like that that I find that really hard like that's probably one of the hardest things is like that everything has to be so meticulously planned like and the thing is like even though we're so lucky to live in this country where there is like a lot of accessible places there's still so much that isn't accessible like nightclubs and bars and like restaurants and you know even places that have disabled toilets the disabled toilets aren't often like adequate and this all is like a factor in whether or not like as a family we can go out together or, wh or whether like as a sister I can take my brother out so like me just like going off like on holiday and stuff like for Harry that would take months of planning for me I could book it like a week before a few days before and just go off and that's the hardest thing for me and I will do I want to do another vlog about like more into like living with a disabled sibling because I still live with Harry and I want to talk about more about like his care and I want to talk maybe like do a question and answer and I want people to if they've got any experience with like disabled friends or siblings or parents or partners like I'd like you to ask me questions and then maybe I can answer them in the video so that's my brother I'm reading a really good book at the moment it's called how to heal your life a bit alternative and I don't know if you you guys have read like the secret or the magic it's very much like all the same pr principles like the law of attraction and how your thoughts really have an effect on like your life and what you bring into your life and how your negative mindset really attracts like a negative life anyway this book is like amazing and I really feel like since I've been reading it that like so many more positive things have like been happening to me and like I've been waking up and even though like I still have those like existential crisis moments where I'm like oh my god I'm 26 what am I doing with my life I do feel overall like a little bit more positive and I do feel like when I speak to people I'm not I don't I like bash myself as much as I used to I'm not like I don't like start like picking myself apart by going like oh look at me I look so fat today or oh look at me my hair looks shit or oh look at me like you know I've got a spot on my face I kind of just don't even mention it and if I do talk about myself I try and keep it quite positive because this book as the magic and as the secret say as well like your vibes like attract your tribe and your thoughts attract your life and what you put out you get back so basically like changing your mindset changing the way you talk about yourself changing the way you go out into the world and treat people has an effect on your life and like I really believe that so I just want you to say like I'm reading this book and I really suggest that other people should read it and you've got to get your shit together basically and on that note I'm starving so hungry and there's a fridge full of food and I'm going to eat it. So yeah, I just, I don't know how you guys are going to receive this video. It's kind of a bit of a playful, like, get to know me. I don't know if you even know me anymore from this video. But I'm going to do another vlog on um, having a disabled brother. Because I kind of want to focus just one video solely on that. And then I want to get Harry into the video. And maybe do some, like, questions and answers. So send me over your questions. And I will put them to Harry. And obviously... 
you know, if there's like a burning question, like hit me up on the socials or just comment um, below on the video, but I'll put all my handles into my vlog. But yeah, I hope you've liked this video and maybe like one day um, I'll have my shit together and I'll let you guys know 